This video uses the operation pivot map. We load pivot map by double clicking, shift clicking, right click, copy, move to our calculator, right click, paste, press enter. To see that we have loaded it, press the VAR key, press CAS, press program, and we see that pivot mat has been loaded into our calculator. Pivot mat is found under the info, immediate mode, CAS, VAR option. Then we press finite math and we see that under linear programming, dual problems, pivot mat is listed. This video finds the inverse for a matrix. If the matrix exists and it's a square matrix, our calculator can find its inverse by just raising it to the negative one power. We use the lowercase letter for A because the capital letter A represents real numbers and we cannot store a matrix as a real number. The other techniques for finding inverse take the augmented matrix A with the identity matrix and use an operation to change it into the identity matrix with the augmented matrix B. The matrix B will be its inverse. For the operation concatenate to work correctly, we must be in the CAS view. We have typed I3 colon equal into the command line. We use the alpha and the shift key for these symbols. Next, we use the math function matrix create an identity to come up with the identity function. Let's look at this on our calculator. We press the toolbox key, the math key, the matrix key, the create, and the identity function. Since we want to deal with three rows and three columns, we put a three into our parameter and press enter. And that is how we come up with the identity function for a three by three matrix. We now type capital M one colon equal to our command line. Since we're going to be wanting to work in the home screen with these matrices, we use the built in matrix M one to get the M when we're in the CAS as a capital letter, we have to press the shift and the alpha. We will use the, the alpha and the shift key to come up with the colon and the equal sign. The list operator concatenate also works on matrices. Let's return to our calculator and do the concatenate function. So we press the toolbox, we press the list operator, and we press concatenate. We type in our two matrices, A, comma, I, three and press enter. Now we have the augmented matrix that we need to use for the rest of our video. We return to our home view, clear the screen and echo back M one. We now perform the matrix operation, reduce row epsilon form. Returning to our calculator, we press the toolbox, press matrices, press row reduce epsilon form, alpha M1, and press enter. Then we press the ABC key. This is why we are using the home view.
so that we get the same answer that we got over here when we did the problem directly. We next look at the subpage pivot mat row operation. Pivot mat or the row operations parallel the technique that we would use to work the problem manually as shown in textbooks. We start off with our augmented matrix with the identity matrix on the right. We use these operations to come up with the identity matrix on the left and with the inverse on the right. We have cleared out our previous answer and have pressed the var key, then program option, and then one to get pivot map. We press our parentheses, we press alpha M1, comma, one, comma, one. So that's where we want to pivot at. We move outside the parentheses. We store this, so we hit shift and store, and we put alpha M2, and we press enter. We will use the fraction key, the A, B, C key, pressing this. We end up with our first pivot, which is shown over here on the left. We do pivot mat two more times to end up with the same answer that we got by using a raised to the negative one power. So we will pivot about two, two and store it as M three. And since this is our final answer, we just pivot about three, three. The pivot mat operation goes column by column. So we can check our work as we go after we do each column. If we want to individually work the problem, we can use the built in HP calculator matrix operation M row and scale add. With M row, we take the reciprocal times matrix one, we replace row one with M2. Then we take scale add of M2, we take the opposite of the number minus three, three, and we take row one, replace row two, with that and store this as M3. We have to repeat this over and over with all the different ones. We do not show the, all the different screens for this because it would take a lot of screens to show the answer. Taking a look at our calculator, pressing the toolbox, pressing catalog. We can see the row operation is found under catalog. Pressing the toolbox, we can see that scale add is again found in our catalog. We have switched over to the subpage matrix equation to show how we use inverse matrices. We have also switched our calculator over to that screen. Using a matrix inverse is another way to work two equations, two unknowns, three equations, three unknowns, or higher. What we do is we have matrix A times matrix X equals matrix B. We multiply both sides by the inverse matrix. We associate the first two matrices. We substitute the identity matrix Therefore, the answer for X is equal to the inverse matrix times B. This is what we have done in the calculator screen here and in the calculator screen on our HP prime. We also put AX equal B into OneNote's math assistant, ask it to solve for X and ask it to show the steps, copying the steps over to our screen. You can see that when it does this as a linear function it is not quite the same as when we do it as a matrix function. So we're better off doing it manually and using our matrix notation to handle this particular problem. We conclude our lesson on matrix inverse by looking at sufficient and necessary. So we go to that subpage. On that subpage, we show us using a matrix editor. 
Since we have not showed the matrix editor before, we thought this would be a good time to demonstrate the matrix editor. So we go into the matrix editor and what we do is we delete rows and we delete columns under the more operation so that we end up with a matrix that is a two by two. When we put this matrix into our calculator as a two by two and ask it to come up with the inverse, it gives us an error. So not all matrices that are square have an inverse. It is necessary to be square, but not sufficient. If we go and look at the same problem in the CAS view, we get a different error message. But in both cases, we end up with an error message. This ends our lesson on matrix inverse.